Good morning. Welcome to the parish of St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, Upper Blue Mountains, and in particular to the celebration of the Mass here at St. Canice's Church, Katoomba. Today the Mass is being live streamed to the parish Facebook page and will be later uploaded to St. Canice's new YouTube channel. From next week, the Mass will be live streamed to YouTube only. Today is the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We welcome the Mass with the opening hymn. Welcome everyone as we celebrate in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we gather this morning, once again, we pray for our community spread in various places that may be suffering now as we enter the fourth week of this lockdown. Let us pray that soon it may come to an end and we can gather once again to celebrate the Eucharist together. But as we gather now, whether virtually or in, in presence here today, let us call to mind our need of God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I've done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, <clears throat> all the angels and saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Show favour, Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, so that made fervent in hope 
faith and love, we may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. And this we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Doom for the shepherds who allow the flock of my pasture to be destroyed and scattered. It is the Lord who speaks. This, therefore, is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about shepherds in charge of my people. You have let my flock be scattered and go wandering and have not taken care of them. Right, I will take care of you for your misdeeds. It is the Lord who speaks. But the remnant of my flock I myself will gather from all the countries where I have dispersed them and will bring them back to their pastures. They shall be fruitful and increase in numbers. I will raise up shepherds to look after them and pasture them. No fear, no terror for them anymore. Not one shall be lost. It is the Lord who speaks. See, the days are coming. It is the Lord who speaks when I will raise a virtuous branch for David who will reign as true king and be wise, practicing honesty and integrity in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel dwell in confidence. And this is the name he will be called, the Lord, our integrity. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ Jesus, you that used to be so far apart from us have been brought very close by the blood of Christ. For he is the peace between us and has made the two into one and broken down the barrier which used to keep them apart, actually destroying in his own person the hostility caused by the rules and decrees of the law. This was to create one single new man in himself out of the two of them, and by restoring peace through the cross, to unite them both in a single body and reconcile them with God. In his own person, he killed the hostility. Later, he came to bring the good news of peace, peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near at hand. Through him, both of us have in the one spirit our way to come to the Father. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep, listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord.
the apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. Then he said to them, you must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going, and many could guess where. And from every town they all hurried to the place on foot and reached it before them. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some length. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The twelve apostles had just been sent out by Jesus to heal the sick, to cast out evil, and preach the good news of the kingdom. And they'd met with success, so much so that they now returned to tell the Lord of their exploits. But of course, they had been so successful that, like Jesus, they had no time to rest. So many people kept coming to them for help and for advice. And so Jesus suggests a respite. Let's go to a deserted place and have a break. That's the first part of today's text from Mark, the return of the apostles with news of their successful mission and the need that they all had, including Jesus, to get a, piece of, a, a little bit of peace and quiet in order to have strength to keep up their good work for the people. But then we move to the second part of the text. The people are not to be put off. They guess where Jesus and the 12 are heading and they make a beeline for that deserted spot and reach it before the boats arrive. So when Jesus steps ashore, the deserted place was deserted no longer. People had come from everywhere around the Sea of Galilee. But instead of either getting back into the boat and heading somewhere else or telling them to all go away, Jesus has what the text translates pity upon them, which the Greek, of course, is much better than that very lame English translation. The Greek actually has the whole concept of the entrails moving, because in the Semitic worldview, the stomach was the center of emotion, the heart the center of thinking. We in the West go up one stage, but in the Greek, the whole of Jesus gut was moved by the people. He feels their need of him. They f he feels their need of his teaching, his proclaiming of the kingdom that exists. And Mark evokes the whole Old Testament idea of shepherd, a little bit of which we heard in our first reading, when he speaks of the people being like sheep without a shepherd. They were leaderless because their own uh, shepherds in religion, their leaders, had not been good viceroys for the good shepherd, the Lord. And so Jesus sees that it is his role now to be their good shepherd, to lead them to the greener pastures, to protect and to care for them. And so we are told he sets himself to teach them at great length, to help them to come into a right relationship with the Father so that they would no longer be left alone, deserted, if you like, in their lives with no shepherd to care for them or to lead them to the promised land. That's the gospel that we heard just then. But it's not just a nice story from a past time concerning Jesus and his apostles. No, as we well know, it is indeed the living word of God telling each and every one of us of realities which are important for us here and now. The, Lord, the word of the Lord is something alive and active and touches our daily existence even now in the 21st century. 
And we must meditate upon that word and let the Lord speak to us through the grace of the Holy Spirit. For me, these words speak a profound truth for all of us who call ourselves Christian. We cannot continue working for the kingdom if we do not rest at times. But nor can we allow our resting to be a self-indulgent luxury without meaning if it doesn't lead to work. There's a reciprocal relationship between the two. Firstly, we cannot continue to work for the kingdom unless we rest. Now that's obvious to most people, except perhaps the workaholics among us, that after a busy week at work or at school or at home, we need some time off or at least a change of pace. If we don't get that, then burnout becomes a distinct possibility for every human being. And it's similar with the Christian lifestyle. Unless we make time to be with the Lord in peace and quiet, in that stillness with which the scriptures speaks about consistently, then our relationship with the Lord can become hollow, even superficial. And that's a great danger for anyone in ministry because the doing of action can lead sometimes to the loss of the foundational reason for that action. Jesus and a relationship with him is absolutely important for each and every one of us. Every single Christian has to find his or her own way to those moments of rest in the deserted place with the Lord. And no relationship, as we know, can grow without time spent together. To maintain the fire of love demands time alone. And so we need to make certain that each and every one of us in our own circumstances make time to be with the Lord to foster that love relationship with him. Now Jesus realized that and he suggested to his apostles that they were exhausted and needed a time of rest to recharge the batteries, to reacquaint themselves with the Father and with him. But of course, if we do not let our resting lead to further action, then the resting is indeed self-indulgence. Times of rest must end. Holidays have a purpose. They are not an end in themselves. And they are to renew us and invigorate us, to strengthen us to get back at it, to get back to work, to get back to school, to get back to our home activities and all the things that we do for the community. To get back to it also with a fresh outlook and new plans with renewed energy. If we had one big holiday, and that is what life meant to us, we'd simply find ourselves asking for meaning in our life. No. Work is a necessity for a fulfilled human existence. And so also for the Christian lifestyle. Prayer and religious devotion is not real prayer or real devotion unless it issues forth in action. As one biblical scholar of the last century put it, and I quote from William Barclay, we must never seek the fellowship of God to avoid the fellowship of people, but to fit ourselves better for it. The rhythm of the Christian life is the alternative meeting with God in the secret place and serving people in the marketplace. So in conclusion, we need to reflect in this week ahead on that movement within our lives. Where is the emphasis? Is it on action? Is it on prayer and reflection? Is there truly a good balance between the two? How can we change to create that good balance? What is it that we need to do? And may I suggest that in this week ahead, as we enter the fourth week of our lockdown here in Greater Sydney, that we make a little bit of an effort with all the time that we now do have to send an email or make a phone call to someone in our community 
whom we just want to keep in contact with and who may indeed need to have someone give them a phone call. That is a way that through our prayer and reflection, which is given to us as a grace in this time of lockdown, may also issue forth in action for the sake of the building up of God's kingdom. Let us ask for the Lord to give us the strength to do all that we can to put any resolutions and any reflections into action in this week ahead as we strive indeed to imitate the Good Shepherd, as we strive indeed to lead all of God's people to the greener pastures of the kingdom. And so we stand and profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so once again, my friends, we put before the Father our prayers and needs. We pray for Christian men and women who have become lay missionaries in your church. Help them to make Christ known in every human way, by words which speak the gospel, by hands which build and heal. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who work to give us entertainment with song, dance and talk. May they bring us joy in living, a joy we can share with you. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who live in sorrow. Let them know that you are near and give them the comfort of friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and our needs. Give us faith in your care for us and the certainty that you know our names and what we need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who have died, those whom we've known, the forgotten souls. Lord, receive them all into your eternal banquet. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. And loving God, we ask you now to hear all our prayers and grant them if they're according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Almighty God, in the one perfect sacrifice, you brought to completion varied offerings of the law. Accept this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. You laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed humankind in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Mary of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we too may be found worthy to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so we pray for the coming of the kingdom in our world and in our lives, in the words that Jesus taught his disciples. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Behold, I stand and knock at the doors, says the Lord. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us next week. As you heard in the introduction, uh, we will be using the new parish YouTube uh, site, and that will be on our Facebook page, redirecting you to that. Um, may I also thank the, the team here who work behind the scenes as well as serve, who have spent a lot of their weekend getting everything ready for this Mass. Uh, we are restricting the number of people that are able to be here because that is also a government regulation uh, reinforced by our diocese. And we are trying to keep it to the same people to avoid any further exposure, uh, any rumour uh, to the contrary notwithstanding. And uh, so may I uh, again ask us all to continue to pray for each other in these weeks and uh, hopefully only weeks, not months ahead of this lockdown. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have a good week, everyone.